Uh, my name is Steve Lautze. I am an ancient president of NICRA from the middle 1990s. And I am also by far the oldest member of the program committee. Uh, I currently do business as Resource Revolution and continue to work on recycling market development issues. Lately, I have coined a very simple phrase, you can't have a circular economy without closing the loop. Sounds easy, right? Um, another expression of this is that it's not enough to divert materials, one must also convert them into new life and commerce. Neil Edgar in the last block is certainly someone who's working a lot on these issues and all of our final five speakers who are gonna close out the day will all be speaking about their work to close the loop. So let's get into it. Uh, the first speaker among the five is a personal favorite of mine and one of the first people that I met when I began 20 plus years ago running the Oakland Berkeley Recycling Market Development Zone. Two decades later, Judy Henderson is still going strong in a unique but ever vital market niche, mannequin reuse. Judy Henderson's mannequin fascination led her to creating a business 20 years ago that recycles, repurposes, and reuses mannequins. Her company keeps about a million pounds of mannequins out of landfills every year, and mannequins aren't made of stuff that can be recycled. Uh, mannequin Madness is recycling. Mannequin recycling has earned the company a special achievement award from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, and Judy operates out of the Bay Area as well as in the Bay Area. Presentation of Judy's uh, remarks are, we make the world a little greener, one dummy at a time. Give it up for Judy Henderson. Thank you. Hi there. Many of, you, many of you may already be aware that the fashion industry generates obscene amounts of environmental waste. But most of the efforts to curb that waste are done with the sourcing of textiles or their production of clothing. But there's still a significant amount of waste that takes place at the store level. And that's where my niche business, Mannequin Madness, is having a big impact both on a local and a national level. <laughs> Mannequins are what brick and mortar stores use to display their apparel. But when these stores close or remodel, they typically throw their unwanted mannequins in the trash. The average mannequin weighs about 25 pounds, is made out of materials such as fiberglass or plastic. It has metal fittings and the bases are either made out of aluminum or glass. Needless to say, materials that do not biodegrade, so they do not need to be in the landfill. But since there's no penalty for throwing a mannequin in the landfill, that's exactly what tends to happen. This picture was just taken a few weeks ago. This is where Mannequin Madness has seen an opportunity to be a disruptor in this retail practice. We offer retailers an eco-friendly alternative. Now, the next best thing to getting someone to change their behavior to, if you don't penalize them, is to offer them a monetary incentive. And that's what we did. By advocating for retailers to let us recycle their mannequins for free, we would come to their location and pick them up. They save about $3,000 to $8,000 per store, depending on how many mannequins they have, because otherwise they'd have to spend a lot of money getting these big dump bins to haul them away. Back in 2001, when we first started offering this service, the cost savings is what really motivated the retailers to work with us. The environmental benefits were really secondary, but fortunately that started to change. We could offer this service for free because we knew there was a secondary market for mannequins. This would allow us to still make a profit while taking care of all the labor and storage costs involved with bringing the mannequins to our location. I wanna let you know that mannequins are an umbrella term for a broad category of display fixtures. As you see in the picture, there's leg forms, butt forms, head forms, whatever. In addition, when we work at a major department store like Macy's, we may get other props, Christmas decorations, pedestals, flowers, basically anything that they may have in a store window. The average lifespan of a mannequin is about seven years in a retail store. Just like fashion styles change, the mannequins have to change along with them. 
So that's why sometimes the mannequins are still in great condition structurally. They're just not the latest trend. The lifespan of a mannequin can be even shorter if it gets damaged in the store because sometimes it's not worth it for them to repair it or if the retailer closes an un underperforming store or if the retailer goes out of business entirely. In 2003, we received a special achievement award from the Environmental Protection Agency for recycling over 100,000 pounds of mannequins in just one year in just the Bay Area. This validation and recognition caused other retailers to call us instead of us having to outreach to them. And they asked if we could recycle mannequins outside of the Bay Area. In order to have a national reach, I had to form a strategic alliance with the handful of other used mannequin vendors out there. There are a few of us, not a lot, but there's a few. Technically, these are my competitors, but I knew it would be beneficial for both of us to be able to work together financially as well as environmentally. So this list here has just a few, few of the many museums and retail stores that we work with, sometimes nationally, sometimes regionally. Now a retailer just has to make one phone call to me and I can coordinate the recycling of their mannequins in almost every major city in the US, including Alaska, and I also have a contact up in Canada. These alliances with the other used mannequin vendors means that now I now divert an average of a million pounds of mannequins away from landfills every year. That's pretty significant, I must say. As I said, we do make the world a little greener, one dummy at a time, and I've become known as the mannequin queen or the mannequin lady. Well, what do we do with all these mannequins? Technically, we don't recycle them. We're not grinding them up and making some other new product out of them. What we do instead is facilitate by extending their life cycle by selling them to people who either reuse or repurpose them. We have a warehouse in Oakland where local people, and when I say local, we have people that drive as far away as Sacramento and Monterey, come to buy a mannequin, and we have an e-commerce store where we ship to customers all over the U.S. and Canada. In one of these pictures, you see I'm sitting on top of some boxes that are unopened. Those were from American Apparel. They had never been taken out of the box. We still, when they went out of business, we still sell them as used and discount them accordingly, but many of the things they said are in perfect condition. So the customers that buy the mannequins in their existing form tend to be fashion retailers, museums, photographers, event planners, fashion students, fashion schools, people who sell on eBay or Poshmark. And we also have some people who collect mannequins, especially if there's a particular style or brand. Even our damaged mannequins get purchased by people who are doing Halloween displays or going to Burning Man. About 30% of our mannequins are repurposed into functional or decorative art projects that people can see on our Pinterest board. Here's one example from our mannequin leg board where people can make a table, a lamp, Halloween display, or even a planner. Who would have known that people could do so many things just with mannequin legs? Even celebrities like repurposed mannequins. This is Rita Moreno, and that's a mannequin that uh, one of the designers on my team had decoupage with some pattern materials that my mother had thrown away, and we had it on Etsy for sale. And Rita Moreno saw it, and since she's located in the Bay Area and noticed that we were in the Bay Area, she wanted to come in and meet the artist that created it. And although we still sell, even though we also sell new mannequins as well, my passion is finding creative ways to sell more used mannequins. My personal favorite is dress form Christmas tree. <laughs> These have been trending for a while on Pinterest, and we have a very extensive Pinterest board about this. Last year, we had a contest where we were looking for the most creative dress form Christmas tree. And the top three winners won a $300 Amazon gift card financed by me, not by Amazon. And since that time, we have a Facebook group called Crafty Fun with Mannequins. And people have taken this idea to do for all other kind of seasonal displays throughout the year. Hold on, I lost my page here. Okay, another idea that we have for used mannequin products is our version of paint and sip. This is where instead of making art for your wall, you make art on your head. We're the only place in the Bay Area where you can make a flower crown headdress or fascinator using sustainable materials. These are mannequin heads that we recycled from a cosmetology school and some flowers we got from the Macy's Flower Show. And so we have weekly classes, private parties. We have a mobile version where you can go on site. If you want to come make a headdress for, um, what is it, 
Earth Day that's coming up, you can come here and do that. Come to our warehouse and do that, or we can come to you if you have enough people. And then people want to then buy the mannequin head after they have the class because they want to display it when they're not wearing it. One more way we are able to sell things. Um, part of the reason that we're so scrappy and trying to find all these different ways to sell mannequins, it's not just because we want to be environmentally conscious, which is true, but we're a totally self-funded bootstrap business. This started as a side hustle out of my backyard. I had no experience in business, working in retail. I had never touched a mannequin when I started this in 2001. I've had a very unconventional path to be an entrepreneur. It has something to do with looking for Tina Turner tickets on Craigslist. I don't have time to tell you the story, but if you go to the homepage on my website, I have a blog post that goes in much detail how Tina inspired me to start this business. I now have three employees, eight contractors, most of whom are over the age of 40. We be purpose people as well as mannequins. And I've won numerous business awards and grants. I want to end by just sharing with you something that's hot off of the presses, our new idea of what we want to do to expand into the future. This started, or the seeds for this came because we were featured in this book called Secret California. It's a travel book. It says, a guide to the weird, wonderful, and obscure. Hopefully we're the wonderful, but I think we're a little bit of all of those. So we've become a bit of a tourist attraction. So what we wanna do now is to create a reuse or an eco village. Now, this is a very, very rough rendering of what it's going to look like. But what we want to do is take shipping containers and repurpose them with, you know, solar panels and other kind of, you know, um, eco-friendly kind of things. And we want to have three distinct sections where each section will have several containers. In our little village, one section will be commercial where Mannequin Manus will be the anchor tenant and we would then rent space to other businesses in that same hopefully recycled space or the creative arts. Another section would be more of a housing section. That's where my employees and I would love to live together in a co-housing situation and also invite other seniors to join us. And we also like to have Airbnbs. I happen to be an Airbnb super host, so I know that people like certain kind of unique experiences, and I think wouldn't they love to come and experience what it's like to live in an eco village? And the third section would be using those freight farms to be able to grow food, to be able to provide you know, fresh vegetables to people, the residents who live there, as well as donate anything to a food bank. We feel since the Bay Area is known as a center for innovation with technology, why not be a center for the circular economy and be able to show great innovation we're having here? So I hope that I can collaborate with some of you in the audience to make this eco village a reality. We don't know where it's going to be yet. This is just an idea, but we need to be somewhere in the Bay Area, someplace with more green. Those pictures don't have a lot of green. We definitely want to have some green. The last slide I just want to show you is we're everything, everywhere, all at once. So these are different ways in which you can contact me for more information or to see inspiring ideas about mannequins. Thank you. All right. Questions? Or I'll, I'll moderate them. So okay. You answer them. Okay. <laughs> are there any questions about that stuff that she just said? Go ahead, sir. Oh, I can go. Oh. Okay. Hi, I just want to say that this was so awesome. I loved this presentation. It was so inspiring. Um, I'm all the way in the back. Okay. on your right over oh, here gotcha. yeah. yeah okay great Thanks. um Thanks. and I've worked in fashion and I know like how bad like and unsustainable some of these practices can be especially with like big department stores absolutely so first of all again I'm like so impressed by this but I want to say or ask um do you feel like from where you were at the beginning where it was you were just like collecting these mannequins to where you are now do you think that it forced you to become more sustainable like it, it made you think about these other practices or well, yeah. I was always a zero waste kind of girl. Uh, my mother grew up on a farm and I used to go and spend time with my grandparents there in Tennessee. And so I think just having more of a connection to the land just made me much more aware before circular economy or recycling became a term. It's just what we did. And so that's why when I first found out that stores were throwing mannequins in the trash and I knew I was trying to find a used mannequin on my own. That's what kind of got me on the Tina Turner thing is that someone was selling a, a mannequin when I was looking for concert tickets. And I thought, oh, I always wanted a mannequin. But they were so hard to find. So I knew that there was a secondary market 
market for them. When I found out stores are just throwing them away, I just said, wait a minute, there's got to be something else that we can do here. So he said, it's always just been part of my DNA. I just didn't know it was going to be with mannequins. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, do you work with like medical mannequins, CPR mannequins, yeah. anything like that? Crash test dummies? No, that's a like different that? kind of niche. <laughs> there, is there are there reuse options for those mannequins as i well? haven't seen any because they were so expensive and you know and they don't necessarily change in style like mannequins in a store change because of the style the medical mannequins pretty much are the same all the time they're still using the same mannequins for uh cpr yeah, since the yeah, 1970s right. until, yeah until they wear out thank you guys yeah beautiful 